the fuller's light bill. You get so used to giving that at some point you forget that you're giving and you don't give anymore. Or you don't pray about what you've given. Or you don't expect anything from your giving. Because it's just, it, becomes, it has to become such a part of your life that it's just normal. But then your growth has to be added to it. It's like when I talked about the needle on the record player. When you put a needle, those of you who know what a record player is. Oh my God, kids like record player. Hmm. There's a needle that goes on this old record player. When you put, you put it on, the album starts to go around. And the more it spins and fits into the grooves, the groove causes the needle to move. See, what you got to understand is your giving causes your needle to move. And if you're not watching what you're giving and if you're not talking to God about it, sometimes you can, there's a thing on the album where there's a scratch in the album and it's been playing for a while, but the needle is in the same place. See, see, your needle should be constantly moving. And so some of us have gotten so used to giving when it gets to the end. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Start it over. If you would like the music the first time, you're going to love it when you learn the words. And then the third time, you're going to learn to dance to it. And then the fourth time, you're going to learn all the band parts. And after a while, you can play the music without the record even being on. Touch somebody, tell them, move the needle back. Yeah. Just start it over again. When you get to the end of one of your favorite songs on your CD player, the best thing for you to do is sometimes just push reset. Pastor Rush, why are we talking about this? We've been talking about this since I was a kid, but now you're in the game. You heard it as a child, now you get to feel it as an adult. And if you've been doing it for years, it's time to push reset. Just because you have risen to one level of your life does not mean that you're at the level that God wants you to stop in. It's time to push reset and move for increase. And if you've gotten all that you can stand, now God wants to load you up so you can bless somebody else. It's not about you. So he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. We've already said, you know, will a man rob God? We talked about that. Now he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, the Bible, by the virtue of limitation and size, couldn't, couldn't cover every single uh, thing that there is to know uh, when it comes to certain details in the Bible. For instance, the Bible doesn't tell us to use deodorant. But some things we just kind of, you know, God talks about cleanliness and, and so, and it ain't in the Bible. Okay. But even with tithes and offering, we don't have an abundance of detail and information about tithing and offering. That's why some people, when they don't want to do something, they find things that you can't prove. At some point, you have to be beyond your proof and go into your belief. I can't prove him. I just believe him. Hello, somebody. And if I need proof, I don't need faith. This is not about what you have. This is about believing what God wants for you and operating as if you believe God does. This plan is about faith. Please understand, without money, it is impossible to please him. Is that what the Bible says? No. It says without faith. So if you have to have proof for everything, you don't need him for anything. He said, you show me your faith. I'll give you more than your eyes can ever imagine. You'll be blinking your eyes. You'll think you're dreaming. Notice the Bible. Let's stick with the Bible. Notice these two words, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, notice that word storehouse, that's a singular word, okay, indicating one. But, but the word all means bring all the tithes, that's more than one, that's, that's all of it. It doesn't mean a part of the tithes or half the tithes or even one third of the tithes. All means all because that's what all means. 
And God said to bring all of them, them what? Them tithes into the storehouse. What storehouse? The one storehouse that you're getting your word from. Now, let me tell you how most people miss it. When we talk about bringing all the tithes into the storehouse, first of all, if I have, if I have, if I have, if, if I have um, 10 apples and, and God says, I want one of them. You know what, as, 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 as crazy as this is, this is, this is such a cool example. Um, I didn't know it was going to be as cool as it was. But you see, now you have to focus on this a little bit more camera-wise, uh, I guess, to make it make sense. But some of you can't see this from where it is. Just trust me. There are 10 little bags of now laters here. Now laters are little candies that you eat when you need a rush on the job. Okay, you got 10 bags of now laters, okay? Now, see, that's 10 bags. Now, watch how I try to explain this to you. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's 10, that's 10 now laters that you got paid. And, and, and the Lord is saying, as a begin, one, two, three, four, five, ten. yeah. He said, bring all the tithes. Tithes mean tenth. Bring all the tenth into the storehouse. So watch this. This is what I'm going to give to God. This is the ten. You agree? You see all of those? I paid my bills, I took care of my vacation, I helped my cousin, I sent some stuff to another ministry. I did all that. But he said, and then I just got all this to just blow. But he said, just, just give me a tenth. But give me how much of the ten? Why would God say all of it? Because see, inside of that tenth, and here's where a lot of people miss it, real quick. See, inside of that tenth, that's more than you can see. So what most people do is say, oh, Lord, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, oh, my, 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 my mama needs some rent money. So what I'm going to do is, Lord, I'm going to, I bless her, but I got to, so I'm going to give God these many. So now I'm going to take God these many, and I'm going to say, I paid my tithes. You did, but you didn't pay all of it. And this is where some of you are missing. You are, you're, 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 you're paying tithes, but you're not paying all of it. You busted the package open when you said, well, I did give so-and-so to what you might call it ministry. That's good. I did bless brother so-and-so and pastor so-and-so. That's good. But that should have come out of your ninety, not his tenth. He said, bring all the tithes to me in the storehouse. What's the storehouse? Well, in the Bible, they would use different methods um, and that was located inside of the temple, okay? And, and there was only one temple at a time where God placed his name. Let me talk about the storehouse now. And, 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 and there were several temples built over a period of time in history. And in that temple, there were priests who ministered on behalf of the people. Also in that temple, there was a place called the treasury. And the treasury was the storehouse. It was like the bank inside of it. And it's where the goods were placed. You didn't place anything in the treasury that was no good. You with me? And there was, there was only one of them, and the goods were brought there and placed on deposit there until it needed to be used to uphold the storehouse or the temple. And as Christians, we don't live under a system of temple like Israel did. In, in fact, we are collectively called a holy people. We don't have like a holy place. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. And we are the body of Christ. Then individually, the Bible says that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. But under the new covenant, however, we do have what we call the local church, the local assembly, places where we gather together. That's why tonight we are in what we call the church. This is the temple, the place that we call the church. But, but realistically under the Holy Spirit, we are now the church. 
because we are more than what this building represents. We have been instructed in the Bible, though, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's not even up to you to decide that you don't want to go to church. God said part of the package deal, the plan is come together in one place with uninterrupted fellowship, and I'm going to teach you something that's going to bless you. 